I thought we were done. <laughs> <laughs> we're not done. Oh. <laughs> we're not done. <clears throat> it's spring and we're here for you. We, Jack, is going to explain what he uses to make holes in different things. Well, sort of. Okay. Sort of. So what do you, what do you want to know? So, <clears throat> uh, what did you use? As you know, these are our paint cans. This one he cut the top down a little bit so it fits in a pot I have. And some are a little taller because they still have the upper part on them, but they're used on latex paint because uh, I think they use paint <clears throat> on oil paints. So what did he use to drill those holes? Well, there's different ways you could drill these holes. I would use either this one, this bit here, or I would use this type okay, of bit. Let me show close up. Well, they can see it. Anyway, okay. The thing with these kind of drill bits is that your hole is, when you're done, is going to not necessarily be super clean or anything. <clears throat> Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll take a knife and I'll just clean it out a little bit. The trick with this is first place it's got a ring on the top of it that holds the handle and everything. Leave that on there. Do not cut that off until you've done your holes. As soon as you cut that off it becomes weaker and you want it as strong as possible when you're drilling the holes. Okay now the best way to do this I mean you can use a hand drill the thing is this thing's kind of awkward and where are you going to put it and your vise doesn't open big enough to hold it and what have you. So you open your vise up a little bit so this can sit on it like a cradle, like cradle onto it. And then you can take your hand drill and then you can, you can drill your holes. You hold it with one hand and drill with the other. Uh, be very careful. Take your time. Wear gloves. You'll find that working with gloves, you, you, you seem to be able to hold things better and stuff. So, so use gloves. Okay, then after you've drilled the holes, well, there's, there's another way you can drill the holes, though. You don't necessarily need... You can use a smaller bit and drill a hole. And then you can take this device. This is a punch-out, knock-out, what do they call them? Knock-out. Electricians use them and stuff for uh, electrical boxes and what have you. But you take this guy here, and you've made a hole, and you put that in there. And then you screw this. This has got teeth on it. You screw that in there on the other side. So then you've done this here, right? Okay, so then, then you just screw that on there the other side. And it'll come up against the material. Now you take your wrench and you turn that. Now it's pretty easy with cardboard. Uh, you, you, you know, you, but, but you crank. And this takes time, but what it does do is it makes a very clean hole. So if you want a nice clean hole, these things are pretty good. But you got to go around and drill all your your pilot holes first, wherever you Where want to be, normal. whatever you want, wherever you want your half inch hole or whatever it is. It's called a knockout punch. There. It's easy. So you just turn that thing. And even these the plastic pots. Jack has put a couple holes. He's going to put a couple more because this is one where I didn't have enough holes. So he's got to do a couple more holes in that one for me. But they're nice and neat. Okay, so once you got that through there, you see you end up with a nice clean hole. And then you got to unscrew this and then stick it in the next hole. Where did I put that tight? So then you unscrew it again. And you put it in the next hole and do the same thing. Now, yeah, this is very time consuming and what have you, but it does make a nice clean hole. Now, with cardboard, it's probably going to come out in two pieces, but um, I find that with the plastic, yeah, it comes out in two pieces. I found with the yeah. with the with the plastic I'll show and and other other materials, I end up with a, with a washer. And uh, which is always sometimes useful for other things. Here are all the pieces. So it's <clears> called <throat> a knockout punch. 
if you just Google that, plumbers use it. And uh, electricians, electricians use it. That's right for knocking out those whole things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for electrical boxes yeah. and what have you. Yeah. But uh, they're very useful for lots of things. And she didn't took this thing apart. <laughs> for example, for example. <clears throat> To buy these, you can buy a set of four different size uh, punches. It's not a very good picture, but you've seen the thing. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So you, you, it comes four different sizes. And for example, it's on Amazon, I think, or whatever it is. Uh, you know, $62.99, you get four of those. They're very useful. I use them all the time, but then I do all kinds of weird things. <clears throat> yeah, you don't want to spend $62 unless you're going to use them, but you can sure make nice... Well, and they don't go anywhere. Nice you know, like for the average household, get a... You're done? Yeah. For the average <laughs> household, uh, you know, like domestic use, they'll last you a lifetime. You're not going to wear them out, you know. At any rate, <clears throat> so what I said about this, now keeping that top on there until you got your holes done, is good because it makes it stronger. Then you cut your top off, the the or I do anyway. Cut the ring off. You can you can just take the metal handle out, and then there you got a pot with holes in it. But uh, if you want a nice top on it, this one's been cut again. But uh, if you want a nice finish on the top, you can just cut that that big fat ring off of there, and then you have a, a, a nice thing. I have the now, dendrobiums in one of these too. They're right. very sturdy. <clears throat> And the same thing goes with these cones, you know, which is probably one of her questions, I don't know. Yeah. Um, like, like this piece, we're not going to leave that on there for our flower pot. But I'm not going to take it off until I made my holes. Because again, it makes the structure stronger and, um, and, and easier to hold on to. I, I, could, I could stick that in a vise or whatever, you know, the end of this into the, the vise to hold it while I work on it, okay? So, and, and there again, even with, with this, where, where's that pot? That, yeah, even with this, or this, same thing. Um, you can say, like I said, you could cradle it on a, on a, on a vise or something, so that, so that it's, it's it held somehow, and then you hold it with one hand and you drill. Um, the same thing with this, but the other thing which works really good yeah, like I have a drill press. Now, not everybody has a drill press, but at any rate, I have a drill press, and then I can take and start it up, and then I can just, so here, you're the drill press, so hold that like that, okay? So then I can just, I can just move it around and go up into the drill press and make my holes. Um, and if you don't have a drill press, what you could do is take your drill and put it into a, a vise to hold it, and then do the same thing, so now it's in a vise, so it's like this, and then I would just go down like this and, and, and make my holes, That's okay? A good idea. And then, and then I take the top the bottom off. Now, these are very heavy, heavy, hard to deal with things, and, and you can't, you know, you, what, the thing is you don't want to damage your pot, right? So I could got in there with a, with a, with a saw or what have you, but it would have been very, very risky of, of, of damaging the edge on this. So <clears throat> what I did do is I took a small bit and I just drilled all around the bottom until I had enough holes that this I could just peel this thing off. And that's, wow, let me show this. And, and, a, you can see where he drilled the holes. He <clears throat> made it pretty design. But this is very hard and heavy. This one was lighter, so I could just cut that off. I'd take a small saw and, and, and work around and, and cut that off. But this one was very difficult because it's so heavy. Okay, but I don't take those off until I've got my holes because these things give me something to hold on to for support. They, they give me uh, strength for the, for, the, for the cone and all that kind of stuff. So these come off last. Put your holes first. Okay, uh, okay, the next one is, uh, I have to bring this over, <clears throat> well, terracotta. Terracotta. Whatever you want to drill in terracotta. Clay, stone, 
I don't care. Yeah, it's, porcelain. She, she calls it different names. To me, it's just stone. It's just, who cares? Yeah, but this one was a kind of a clay terracotta pot that was a lamp. And Jack cut a little bit off the top so I could get a plant in. And then the hole on the bottom is where it drains. And he did all the holes on the side. Now, yeah, you mentioned cutting the top off. Well, if I'm going to cut the top off of this thing, then you have to have um, a wet saw. Um, they, they use stone, people that collect stones and stuff use them. There's a name for this stuff. Like tiles? Cutting yeah, tiles. cutting tiles or what have you. So, because you have a wet stone and it's a diamond uh, bit, and then you can run it through and very carefully cut it. Uh, you know, you're not going to take a handsaw to, to this kind of stuff. But um, as far as drilling holes in it, <clears throat> there's these, these kind of bits which are glass and tile drill bits. Now, they work. Um, and I never do drilling of a pot or glass or anything unless I've got, got the bit underwater. So my drill, I don't have my drill, you know, just, just the tip of the bit and this. So the bowl, here, you can go. Okay. So the bowl lays down and I have a big sink and then I have water in it. And then in this case, because I'd have to have water like up to here or whatever. So in this case, I would, I would just have the tap running very, very slowly just so that this is staying wet. And I've got this supported in, in, the, in, the, in the sink. Maybe I'll stick a, a, a couple of towels under here folded up or something. Or somehow I'll hold this so that, so that I, I, and then I have the water dripping on it. And then I take my diamond bit. I, would, I prefer the diamond bits. And uh, you, can get, you can get packages of every size you can think of. And, and they're not that expensive anymore. They used to be. And, and if you keep that underwater and you always have water running on it and you drill, the thing is to take your time. Don't try to rush it. Don't push it. You start shoving on it and pushing on it and, and mixing, you know, something moves and now your, your bit has, has, has broken the, the, the dish. So make sure it's supported strongly and you take your time and always keep water on it. Now, they'll tell you that you don't need the water. I could take this bit and I could drill a hole in here with no water, but uh, you know what? They don't. They don't try to make these things to last forever. They make them, you know, economically whatever they do. But there's a cement that holds those diamond chips on there. Well, that cement, like most cements, are you know, heat will will uh, uh, break them down, and so there's a lot of heat comes from this if I'm not using water. And I would be lucky to get half a dozen holes out of this thing if, if I didn't use water. But by using water, this thing is probably just as good as it was new, and I can make holes on, again and again and He's again. He's drilled holes. I've drilled lots of holes, and I still use this bit, and it's great because I always keep it wet. I don't, I don't, I don't run dry. All the misting <clears throat> holes have had a hole drilled in them. One hole, they're all glass, some of them antique glass, and they've all had a hole drilled so that the, the Mr. Pump electrical can go out and there's a little plug and they never leak. Never the had other one thing leak. is you got to be careful too. Some glass is really cheap and it's very thin. Yeah. And it won't take much to break it. you got to be very careful. Always make sure that you keep yourself straight, you know, and uh, you can move a little bit, just, but, but the thing is, you take your time. If you try to rush through it and you start going like this and stuff, you're going to wreck it. These are the drill <clears throat> bits. But I bought a kit that uh, had a whole bunch of different sizes and it was, it was really inexpensive. This, this was actually, uh, Pretty expensive compared to what the others are. And this pot, <coughs> this pot was also plastic and drilled from. Oh, here, here's them. here's an example of oh, a kit yeah. you can get of all the different sizes, and I think that whole thing costs like twenty bucks or something. They're 
<laughs> and because he puts them in water, they last a long time. So um, I think that's it for holes. Um, no. Okay. We didn't go into the, um, oh, like wow. this one too. Is 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 good for drilling like this type of hole. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so again, it makes a it makes a pilot hole first. Right. And then it, and then it makes the hole and keeps this straight. Otherwise, if you tried to do this, you see, that's the disadvantage to this type of bit. Is it's just this this well I'll take it out of here. You see, there's no, there's no uh, pilot hole. There's no. See this, this makes your hole centered and keeps it still while you make a circle and you make a nice clean hole. Now this is good for your plastic or, or different things, too, but it's an advantage because it has the pilot bit. Okay. This one, when you're drilling, you you have to kind of start on a, on a on on like one side and just get it started and then slowly straighten yourself out to make it so it so it'll stay within that hole. If if you try to go straight on it, this 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 thing is gonna go all over the place. Right? If you try to go straight on it. Mm -hmm. You gotta start at a side and then work your way in and then once you get it started, then you'll have a ring and it'll stay in that ring and, and just to slowly take your time and, and you'll get through it. And but if you go straight on it, it's going to be scooting all over the place. And, and so be very careful to start with because some things you do, you don't want to necessarily have scratches everywhere. So you don't want this thing traveling all over the place. So start off on one edge and slowly work your way down till you have a, a hole that, that this will stay in. And then, and then slowly work through it. But when you're using a water and drill, make sure you're not electrocuting yourself. Yeah, well, <laughs> in the well, first place, I usually use a drill, uh, a cordless drill. But the thing is, you don't have to. You can use a power drill. It doesn't matter. You're not putting the drill in the water. You know, be careful with your tap. You got the water running. Just, just don't, you know, just use caution. As long as you don't get water on the drill itself. You don't have anything, nothing to worry about. Um, you know, your hands aren't dripping wet. You're not, you're not in the water. You're, you just got the bit in the water. So as long as you, you know, use common sense and you're, you're careful, you, you won't have any problem there. Well, there's also, like, for example, there was one, she had some plastic that we rolled out and then she wanted to fold it up into a cone. Yeah. Well, when you got something like that, and you can't use this, like, for this sort of thing, because you'd have to have something under it, like uh, uh, to, for support. But punches are good, and, and you you know you can get these in all sizes and what have you. Punches are good. Like when she had that flat material, mm -hmm. I was able to lay it out and go around and punch holes all in it, all over the place before we rolled it up and made it into a cone. So any job you do, always think of. Uh, ahead of, of a procedure that you want to use to do it, right? Um, you, you know, you take a you take a cone and you say, "Oh, yeah, this will make a nice thing." And you go chop the top off and everything else. And you look, "Oh, that's perfect in the in the device that's holding it or whatever." And then and then and then you say, "Oh, we're we going to put some holes in it." Okay, now you're going to put holes in it, but now you've already chopped the top off. So what I'm saying is just think ahead of what you're doing. And the procedure to use when you're doing it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what else was there? Just the barbed wire drops. We oh, often talk. Well, I use these on a lot of things because for one thing they're cheap, and another thing they're actually pretty good. And they pretty don't good metal, rust. and they don't rust. Um, you can take these. You know, I mean, I take them apart, and I and I hammer them and straighten them out, and have a straight piece of metal, and I can use it for different things and. Or I'll take these, you can take these and, and um, if, if this isn't strong enough, you can take these, you, you put the, 
the top or, or, or what have you and a vise or something to hold it and then and then you take and you you twist like just like this is two pieces of wire that's twisted together right you can do the same thing put these two together and it hold, it's held in a vise and then you twist it and then you come out with a really I didn't bring up one no but you come out with twice as thick and, and, and twice as strong and then I've even done it with uh, four pieces uh, it's, it's hard to twist it, but when you're done, you've got a piece of iron, uh, you're not going to bend it. He's okay? used those for these plant stands, and then I painted them. <clears throat> and the big stands that hold the traffic cones, and the skeletons of all our chicken wire stuff, all have these. This, this, this is stuff is called bob wire drops. And the reason they're called that is because... Uh, I'll never get to work now. Is is they can stick that? See that? Yeah. They can stick that in a in a, um in a in a barbed wire is something you don't really want to handle too much as you can very well understand. So you drop this through it and it spins just like that. And then now you can take the barbed wire and you can handle it and you can strap this to a post or what have you. And anyway, this is the sort of idea that I believe that they're, that they're, they're for. And then it's the same thing if you turn it upside down. And they're strong. We use them for lots. Oh, here it'll, it'll go the other way. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they're, they're very useful anyway. I'm not sure what that has to do with making holes, but it's, it's a useful thing to understand, I guess. Uh, so if you're looking for those things, they're called drops or or, or bob wire drops, or there's all kinds of different names for them. They're actually not not that easy to find. I looked, at, I get them in a local place here that has them, but I looked online and and uh, the only other place I could find them, I think, was in Australia or something. I, I don't know. We get them at Buckerfields. Buckerfields is. Yeah, and Canadian. a lot of people you say bob wire drop, they don't even know what you're talking about. Farm so, places, really. Yeah, farm places, yeah. So, so I don't know what else you want to cover. I guess that's it. I'm going to show them the chicken wire bird. Okay. And uh, I'll have to unhook this. Well, maybe not. So we'll just go out and show the chicken wire. You want me to take Use the noise. I'm sure. <laughs> I come out here and it's cold every morning, and I, I put now. two, three coats on. <laughs> What's the temperature out here? Temperature right now is 41, and I oh. come out when it's been 41. So here, um, I started putting the feathers on the bird, and I fold this chicken wire. For these little feathers, just body feathers, and I just fold it and I wrap all the little prickly ends and then I tie it to the the body, which I made of just first chicken wire wrapped about where I thought the body went. And then I've made some feathers. There, uh, eagle has twelve tail feathers, and then it has some little ones here. So first, I'm doing the feathers and then there's some big ones. The big project, the length of time to do the wings because there's a lot of feathers and they each have to be done. So <laughs> he's going to be uh, stronger in the wings as I start wrapping chicken wire and bringing it down and adding feathers. And I want to, I'm doing everything Jack made, the skeleton to size, to full size, and I also have to make sure my feathers and everything are the right size. So I come out here and it's cold and I sit here with some music on and uh, just get at it. So I have lots of pictures I follow. And this one shows after I get the body on, how I do the wings, and there's some bigger feathers that come both sides of the back. So I have pictures of 
of feathers when I did the tail feathers. So that's what I do in this early spring. <laughs> so. Jack made the, the claws. And I'm leaving the head to last because I have to do it in order of feathers, how they lay on the bird. So down, down. I've done the feathers on the legs and then I do the front, all the front, underneath, up there, and then I'll start the wings. Yeah, <laughs> quite a mess. These are the gloves I've been wearing. <laughs> we got a bunch of these at a garage sale. Anyway, that's it. Hope you're having a good time.